Okay, so before we get started, I just wanna take a quick second to thank all of you uh, out there uh, in YouTube land that have watched the channel, supported the channel, subscribed, commented, uh, all of that stuff. I would not be here today doing what I'm doing um, and owning this company, running this company, doing the things that I do without this channel. Um, you guys have made that happen. And when I first started this, I, I never really thought it was gonna be anything uh, like it is now. And if it was, if, if it did get there, it might take, you know, five to 10 years. And here we are a little over three years and it's 42,000 subscribers. And that's just, it's mind blowing to me. And you know, with when I started to see that this was becoming a thing, I've really done my best to try to make the best content I can. Um, I'm typically out here working by myself, so it's sometimes limited on how I can film things. It'd be nice if I had someone working with me that can hold the camera sometimes. But I try to make the best content I can, you know, because if you guys are gonna take time to watch it, you know, take time out of your busy day doing whatever it is you're doing to watch my content, I wanna make it worth your while. But I just wanted to thank all of you guys it was very hard getting this company started and getting it going. When I first moved here and started this out of the sort of out of the blue, or at least from a, a company that you know worked that we were kind of doing on the side into full time, I, you know I was a 34 year old grown man starting a company from nothing. I had to live with my parents for two years. I had to set my ego and my pride aside to you know to try to see if this company could succeed and you know that was a tough thing to do but you know i i wanted to see where it would go and i wanted to give it my best shot but the channel you know the opportunities and the financial support that the channel has provided because of you guys has allowed me to keep doing this it supported me while i was doing you know getting this company up and going so I could um, take the money, instead of paying myself, basically reinvest that money back into the company and, and try to live off what little bit of money I was making from YouTube. And that's because of you guys. And I would, again, I would not be here today if it wasn't for you guys. Um, I really don't think I would be. So I wanted to just thank all of you um, for all the support that you guys have given me and the channel. Um, and I hope we continue to grow and we keep continue to do newer and bigger and better things. We'll see where it goes. Um, but, you know, thank you to all of you. Sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, you know, God bless all of you. Um, I really appreciate it. So, um, on to the video. Good Sunday, everybody. Hope everybody's having a great weekend. We are back out here at this cow farm where I mulched around that fence and we've got another project out here to do and I'm gonna show you guys what that is. Big announcement for the channel today. Uh, if you guys saw my Instagram story a couple weeks ago, if you guys follow me on Instagram, um, it's uh, same as the channel name I dig it for. You guys probably saw something on there and I'm gonna show you guys what that is right now and I got another big announcement, so let's get into it. Well, here it is. I think the day, this is the day that a lot of people who've been watching and following this channel, I've been doing this for a little over three years now uh, with the company and the channel, started them both at the same time. And uh, I think this is a day a lot of people have been waiting for, for me to get a mulcher for this skid steer. Uh, and it finally happened. So I'm really excited about this. This is the Prenoth M450S 1600. And before we get into this, I want to give another big announcement really quick. Okay, so before we get into the mulcher here, I uh, want to announce um, the partnership that I now have with um, Carolina Construction Equipment. Uh, when I was in the market for this Prenoth, um, I uh, went to my local dealer here, the one that I got the mini excavator mulcher from, and after dealing with them, you know, for a little bit, I just wasn't as happy as I would have liked to have been with them. Um, and so um, I went on Prenos website and found Carolina Construction Equipment. They have three dealerships. Uh, one is in Waxhaw, North Carolina, right outside Charlotte. Uh, the other two, one's right outside Columbia and the other one is right outside Charleston, uh, which is all kind of in my general area here. 
uh, not too far. I think the one down in Charleston is probably the closest one. It's about an hour-ish drive, hour and a half, depending on from where I'm at. And um, went up there, met with the owner, uh, Casey Wyatt, and uh, told him I was interested in a head. And uh, we talked everything through. And uh, I bought this head. And this is not a sponsorship. Nobody gave me this thing. I, I bought it. Um, it was a huge investment. You know, there was... Um, you know, loans and financing and down payments and all that whole rigmarole. Um, so nobody gave this to me. This this was a huge investment for me and Kelly and the company. Um, but uh, they're a great dealership. And they, you know, Casey worked with me on this. And they gave me a great deal. They are uh, a huge dealer of all kinds of equipment. Um, they actually have two of these Prenoff heads uh, on site right now uh, waiting to be sold. Um, they have all kinds of ASV, Wacker Newson. Um, if you're in the market for a mulcher, they are a dealer for Fecon, uh, Prenoth, uh, Dennis Seamoff, and Loftness, I believe, um, as well as CID and many other brands. So anything that you want or need in uh, heavy equipment or forestry, they pretty much have it um, as far as attachments or if you're looking for ASV or Wacker Newson equipment, as well as several other brands. I'll put a link to their uh, website in the description below. And uh, if you're interested in getting a mulcher, uh, call them up, uh, phone numbers in the description below and use the promo code IDIGIT and uh, they will hook you up with anything you need. They ship nationwide. And so I'm really happy to announce that. And uh, let's get into this thing. All right, so let's get into the details of this thing. Uh, this is, like I said, this is the Prenoth 450S. If you guys are familiar, and I know a lot of you are, you're familiar with uh, John with Upstate Brush Control, you're familiar with his channel. Um, he just got a Prenoth as well. Mine is a little different from his. This is the, the 1600 model. He has the 1900 model. And the only difference between the two is the width of the drum. And that uh, 1600 is the width, the inside width of this mulcher uh, in millimeters. So that's 1600 millimeters um, and it's about 63 inches. The 1900 is 1900 millimeters, which I think is around 74 or 75 inches. This is the smallest one, the most narrowest one that they make for a skid steer. This one was a little bit hard to get. You don't see this one too much on the bigger skid steers. The 1900 model is the most popular one. They also make a 2200 model as well. Uh, for like a little bit bigger machine, like a lamb track, like a more dedicated machine. And uh, so this is the, the narrowest one. And I went with this one because this machine, this is um, an 85 horsepower machine. It weighs in right at about 11,000 pounds. The high flow puts out, the, the factory spec says 33 gallons a minute. But when John Deere, I took this over to John Deere, um, Greg, and Mike and all those guys who are awesome over there, they did all the tuning and flow testing on this thing, which was a whole ordeal. I'll get into that in a second. But they flow metered this thing out, and it's putting out dead on 35 gallons a minute. So that was a bit of a shock uh, to, to them and to me a little bit. So um, I always just assumed it was 33. So this thing's putting out 35. You see this model head on, I've seen it on YouTube on the uh, ASVs. Uh, the 75, the RT-75s, and uh, I think I saw it on a, on a Bobcat as well, 70, 70 horsepower Bobcat. And uh, the reason I went with this one is because overall it's lighter than the 1900, and with me putting out, you know, that 33-ish gallons a minute, this head, this drum is a little, little lighter, being a little narrower, and so I felt like it would spin it up quicker, the recovery would be quicker because we're the hydraulics are trying to push uh, about two or three hundred pounds less weight in this drum and you can see the the middle of the drum right there kind of goes or the edge of the drum where the the cutter ends goes right up about the center line of the track there and it's just inside the track maybe about three or four inches on each side and uh I, the other reason i wanted to go with this one is because the other one would have been a couple of inches outside and, you know, that was something that uh, John had talked about with his ASVs. That bull hog he runs is a 60 inch. And so the outer edge is, is basically even with the track there. 
and the other one on this one it would have been a little outside and i do a lot of work going through underbrushing areas and in timber you know big timber where you're having to kind of weave and navigate through there and a wider head just makes that a lot harder so i i, I went with this narrower head for uh you know recovery you know i wanted a lighter head a smaller head um for the recovery issues and i also wanted to be able to be more maneuverable going through the woods and weaving my way in bigger timber when you're underbrushing that out uh, obviously this thing is going to replace the mtl for some things but not everything so if you guys know a lot of you guys are fans of the mtl those are not going anywhere i still have plenty of mowing and bush hogging projects that those will be used on uh, because they are more efficient at doing like if i was going to mow this field i'd be out here with the mtl but we're not doing that today i'm gonna get into what we're doing in just a minute um because it's a it's a 72 inch cut so it's definitely more efficient when you're kind of mowing brushier stuff like this the grass and grass and white brushy trees so um but yeah it's pretty much the same as the one that john has like i said just a little narrower i think the head's got 30 teeth on it these are the same teeth that the um mini excavator runs same style same size same everything and that was the other reason i wanted to go with pre-off so if i'm carrying around spare teeth uh i can you know they're interchangeable between both machines if i've got both of them out on a job i don't have to carry two different kinds of teeth and uh i only have to go to one place to get teeth i don't have to go to two different dealers and two different manufacturers and get two different kinds of teeth and two different kinds of bolts and yada 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 so i and i really i really really like my preenoff head on the um mini excavator i've been super happy with that thing it's awesome one thing that they did do with these heads that I really liked, and I actually told the people at Prenoth about this when I went to the uh, expo this past year. I met with them. They asked me if there was anything I didn't like about the head for the mini. For the mini, and I said, "Yeah, there's one thing is like where that carbide tooth is, that narrow little carbide tooth. What happens is when that tooth comes around, it's not very close to the inside of this drum here, and stuff gets caught up in there." in these rakers right here especially along this edge and you know at that point that carbide will rub on that piece of wood or whatever in there and it'll it'll get hot it'll smoke sometimes depending on how big it is so you got to stop you got to get out and get that out so on these new ones on this drum they have this carbide here that comes around and it's got this extra edge that sticks out here that rakes along the side and that one's a little further out but this one right here you can see when it comes around it gets very very close to the inside of that drum to clean that material out of there and make sure nothing gets stuck right in here which i really 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 like and uh comes right along around through there but the rest of these are all chipper teeth except for these ones on the side these are specialty carbides for these these edges here this can run carbide you can change these out for carbide but for where i'm at what i'm doing the uh, chipper style teeth are what I like to run. I hope I get as many hours. I don't think I will, but I'm hoping I get as many hours out of these as I got out of the ones on the mini, which was about 300 hours. I was really happy with that. So that's that. Okay, so <laughs> I want to give a big shout out to the guys, Greg and Mike at Flint, for going through all the rigmarole to test this thing. So it, somebody asked me on the channel um, where I was changing out the teeth, the pump motor for the MTL, the XCT is missing. Because if you guys saw the against all odds video, I blew out the seal in that motor. And I mentioned that to Greg when I brought this thing over there to him to tune it. And he said, well, we're gonna check the heads to make sure you're not bypassing at the case drain. And so what, ha and sure enough I was. And so what has happened, what had happened and what probably likely blew out the seal in the motor for the MTL was the seal in this. So this this head right here, this female head, it screws in right here. It screws into this manifold, and there's a seal on the end of the threads right there that keeps the oil from bypassing the head when it goes through. And what was happening was the, that seal had gone bad, and the the oil that was bypassing the seal was getting dumped into the case drain, which is the pressure relief. For these piston motors and this thing and the mtl also has a piston motor so they need these case drains to relieve that pressure well there's naturally always oil coming through here just through the normal operation of the motor but if this oil in here is also bypassing 
the seal and going being dumped into the case drain it can get too much oil built up into it and the case drain can't handle all of that flow and it will build up excess pressure in the motor the piston motor or whatever you're running and it will blow out that seal and that's most likely what happened in the mtl so they flow tested this found that seal was bad i actually had this head in my truck i keep spares for these heads in my truck um, in case they go out because they do so got those I took them this female they replaced that um, got everything flow tested that was all good but then they found out this manifold was cracked uh, as well and it was leaking oil they didn't know if that was something that they did or not so uh, props to greg he caught me a brand new manifold right here which was awesome thank you greg those guys over there dear greg and mike and john and all those guys are so awesome um been super ha super happy with my service over there um since uh greg and john have been taking over things over there uh, they're just great people and so they got that figured out got everything flow tested then we had an issue here we had to get adapters we had to order adapters these did not come the, the lines here did not come as jic's um like most attachments do they just come with a jic and you screw a quick connect head onto them they didn't so we had to order some adapters to make those work and that was another day uh, so we had a bit of a time where the guys over at John Deere had a bit of a time, but they got this thing spooled up and tuned. And the reason why these things have to be tuned, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail here again. The reason these things have to be tuned is because these drums are specifically designed to run between 2000 and 2200 RPM. And the motor has some adjustment knobs in it. And the motor basically the this mulcher has a variable displacement motor in it and what it is that basically works like a transmission when it's first starting off you know to try to spin the head it's in basically a, a like low gear or like a high torque mode and then once it gets up to about um uh 80 percent uh and the pressure drops off it it shifts gears basically inside it and it the, the motor senses that through the pressure and it goes into a basically a, a second gear a high speed mode where the drum is basically turning on its own just through its sheer momentum. And then as you start engaging material and it bogs down, it goes back into a low torque mode to keep the head spinning and then to recover it back up. So based on the size of your machine, the, the amount of pressure that it has and the flow, you have to set that um, pressure setting in there. It's uh, to the shift point from low to high. It's 80% of whatever your uh, system pressure is. Uh, the total system pressure. So if you're running 5,000 RP uh, or 5,000 psi in your machine, um, you would go down. Uh, your your shift point would be at 4,000 psi, and so that's how that works. So that's why these things have to be tuned, and that's probably what happened when you know if you saw John's video when he first got this prenoth and he hooked it up and it was vibrating. It was probably because it was running way above the normal RPM, and so any little uh, variations in the balance on the weight that magnifies as as rpm increases those little uh uh deficiencies in the balance are are you know they go up exponentially as rpm goes up like if you were to take two teeth off of this and just spin it with your foot you wouldn't see any any wobble or anything in it but if you spun it up to a thousand rpm two teeth would have this thing missing would have this thing you know you know vibrating all over the place so that's 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 why they, these things have to be tuned to get maximum performance out of them so that's that if you guys got any questions in the comments hit me up i'll try to answer what i can i do need to shorten these lines a little bit um they're a little bit long i'm probably going to have these shortened but for now this will do um and i'm gonna show you guys what we got right now for this job sorry that was long-winded but i know people are going to have questions i'm trying to alleviate that all right so pretty simple job today we are just going to take this mulcher and just kind of go right down this line and just mow this stuff back just a little bit right here. Uh, there is a ditch right here, but he doesn't need to go all the way to that ditch. It's just this growth is starting to encroach onto this field and he wants to get, you know, this cleaned up back here, bush hogged and turned over so he can start planting back in here again or turn this into pasture for the cows. But we need to shave back this growth here um, along this uh earlier this week and i didn't film this but there's a ditch about where that big gum that little gum right there is standing up there's a ditch that runs through the middle of this field it was all grown up with some gums and pine about those size right there i think the biggest one was about six inches i mulched that down with the excavator 
And the original plan was to come through here and cut this back with the excavator. And I was like, nah, I said, I think I can do that a lot quicker with this mulcher. We'll just drive right down this thing and that'll be that. And it shouldn't take too long than having to do that with the mini. So that's, I, I have not, I've spun this thing up, but it has not been in any wood at all. I have not mulched a thing with it. I didn't want to um, do anything with it uh, until you guys saw it. And I wanted to be the first one to try it out with you guys on video. So my first time mulching anything is going to be you uh, both of our first times seeing how this thing goes so uh i think we're done with the talk and let's get to mulching let's see what this thing can do
we are done. This is, uh, so I'll show you guys the ditch here really quick. I didn't get to film as much as I would have liked. Uh, it was a little warm out and the GoPro kept cutting off. It was, it was getting overheated. This is the ditch I mulched out earlier this week. I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday I came and uh, got all that mowed down. I need to get this tree frond out of here. There we go. Chuck that over here. But yeah, we're just trying to, he just kind of wanted to clean up that. I mean, the, the, the stuff was just creeping, you know, and just try to get some of the field back and keep that creep off there. The stuff was a bit too big to, to, to bush hog. Um, there were some pretty decent sized pines in there, a few of them. But yeah, just kind of just went down the side, mowed all that back and got this done. This, I'm gonna blow you guys' mind right here. I never cranked the throttle up on this thing more than uh, about 75%. Got no issues with the performance. I mean, this thing was spinning this head. I mean, even at 60% throttle, I was smoking that stuff. Um, so it, man, this Prenoth is bad to the bone. It was smoking stuff. The only issue I've got is where this is. So this is kind of how do you tell where you're at on the ground. Where I'm at in the cab, it's kind of hard to see down and see that right there, that skid plate, so I know where I'm at in relation to the ground. Um, I kind of have to lean forward to look right there at that edge. That's the only real problem that I'm encountering with running this head. So it's, it's kind of hard for me to know if I'm like really hard into the ground or not because you just want to kind of run the head right along the top of the ground. Um, you know, and then just kind of keep it up. You know, I'll watch the footage and kind of see where I need to improve, but seeing these edges right here with this narrower head is a little tough. But I do like the narrower head. I think in the long run, it's, I'm going to like it better than the wider one um, just for the weight and the performance. But uh, if this was a 333, you know, you might want to go with the wider head. But yeah, super happy with this thing. It kicked butt in here. This, this was, took me about two hours to go through here all the way down. And I mean, if I'd have done that with the this uh, mini, with the mini excavator, it would have taken me five, six hours. This ditch, this ditch took me two hours to go from there to there to, to mulch this out. That was about two hours. So that's the reason I didn't film it because there just wasn't much to it. But it, it was about as overgrown as this was. And that took two hours. So, all right, well, there's the video. Much more to come with this. I've, I've got several other projects kind of lined up for this thing. I'm really happy with it. And, uh, it's Sunday, so I'm gonna go load this thing up. I'm blow it off, load it up. I'm going home for the day. So I will check you guys later. Bye everybody.